What's up, divas? Okay, and Devo. So, you guys already know what time it is. It is Real Talk Wednesday, and I sound like shit, okay? Like, seriously, I sound like um, a pile of shit right now. My voice is so hoarse, like... I woke up like this. It's probably from all this yelling and screaming that I did, not yesterday, but the day before yesterday. Going off on my son, my 19-year-old, like, you know what? I'm trying to really figure out with these kids these days, like, when are they ever going to get it? Like, on some real shit? Like, when are y'all ever going to fucking get it? Like, seriously, like, it seems like you keep telling them something and, and telling them something and telling them something. And it's like, does it even get through to you? Does it even impact your fucking brain? Like, on some shit? On some real shit, like... What the hell is going on with the youth today? Like, I already told you I had to get my son out of some shit last week because he's 19. But it's like, okay, I bail you out of the shit. Like, you know, I literally bail you out of your problems. I bail you out of shit. And you just still do dumb shit. And I would hate to be the one just to be the bearer of bad news to him and just tell him, like, listen, you have till your next paycheck. And then I need you to go. I need you to move out. Like, I'm at my wit's end with this boy. You know, he was gone. He went to New York. He came back. When he was gone, you guys seen, hopefully you guys seen the vlog that I did. And I freaking did his entire room over because it was supposed to be a guest room, just an extra room, okay? Not even an extra room because Mumsy could have had her own. Nay could have had her own. But I just wanted to just make it look nice. So if Nay would have went down there and made that her room, that would have been perfect, you know, I, I took my blood, sweat, and tears and freaking did that room over. How many times has he had to clean this room? It's like a pigsty. It looks like somebody's trap house. It looks like somebody's crackhead's um, room. It just looks a mess. Like, how do you fucking live like that? And I'm constantly telling him, like, you really don't appreciate me because had you appreciated me, then the shit that I just did for you, and did in his room, you would keep it looking like it was spotless. Yeah, and still, you just got it looking like trash, like before you left. I put a brand new bed frame in there with a headboard and a footboard. You know what I'm saying? I cleaned the carpets. I put new curtains in there, table, chair, light, lamps, everything. Shit on the wall. And you just made it go back to the way it used to look like when your bed was on the floor. Like he has this thick-ass mattress. And it wasn't on a bed frame. It wasn't on a footboard, a headboard. It was just on directly on the floor. And... You wouldn't even have known because the mattress is so thick and the box spring is so thick that I just left it. You know, little by little, I was getting my house together. And, you know, he was already sloppy. The curtains, they had messed up the blinds in the room. So there aren't any more blinds. It's just like, you know what? I'm really at my wit's end with him. And I hate to be like the bearer of bad news and just be like, you know, something is time for you to go. Because I really know that in reality, he's never going to survive on his own. He's not going to make it. And, you know, you really don't want to feel that way about your children. But in reality, like, I'm going to be, like, realistic about this. He's just not going to make it on his own. So I'm just, like, really at, the at, at like, the breaking point of just saying, get the fuck out. Like, for the, probably the fourth time, just get the fuck out. But this time, please don't come the fuck back. Like, seriously. You know, my voice is hoarse because I was, like, screaming at the top of my fucking lungs to where my neck veins was, like, sticking out. Like, this is ridiculous. Anyway, in case you guys are curious to know about the hair that I'm rocking, it's actually really, really old, okay? Like, this is some really old hair. Um, I want to say it's, like, probably, like, two years old and I actually bleached it. Um, it was, um, I guess it was like deep curl because for one it's dry. Like when I say it's dry, like not in a bad way, but it's not so silky textured. But so anyway, it's like two years old and yes, here it goes. AliExpress angel hair, angel grace hair, um, angel grace hair. Okay. Yes. This is the angel grace hair. All right. So let me tell y'all. They have some good hair any fucking way to begin with. 
This was done in December of 2015. So, wow. Anyway, so two years old, two and a half years old. So I hadn't worn it in over a year. And it was just like, it wasn't a brassy color, but it was more or less like that light yellowish goldish, light yellowish goldish type of color. And I thought it was really cute like that too. But um, I wanted to... Um, change it up because you guys know I really do like that that box dye that I've been using lately that Revlon color silk and bright auburn so I went and got a box and actually put it into this hair you know what I'm saying not a box excuse me I think I used I did a video of it in case you guys want to see but I think I used probably like I think I used like three boxes of it right I'm not really sure but I know it was enough I think it was three or four boxes. I'll have to look at the video, but I got the box done. I was like, you know, I'm going to change it up because I haven't worn it in so long. And I don't really like the color no more. So I'm going to just put this on it because I really do like this color, honeys. Can we talk about life? I'm like giving my own self some life right now. Yes. Giving my own self some fucking life. Seriously. So anyway, let me tell y'all about my experience because we're going to move on to this real talk. So you guys know, um, like if you was, you know, last week, I did um, tell you guys I was supposed to be going to the dentist. On Tuesday was my appointment. You know what I'm saying? It was at the point, it was at the dentist's office. So of course, you know, Monday I called just to confirm that I had the correct time. Because I surely did not want to show up late. Plus, you know, my, my face was hurting. My tooth was hurting. My whole right side of my face was like in pain, you know. And I had held off long enough for this emergency. Like, I could have been called the dentist and been like, listen, I really need to get in before my appointment. But I didn't do that because, the you know, the new dentist that I've been dealing with, um, they decided to move to a new office. So they wasn't going to be reopened until the 1st of March. Now, mind you, when I went to see them, it was in February. I think it was like February 4th, February 6th, somewhere around there. And so if you guys are not aware of how I met them, I don't go to my old dentist anymore because they were just really pricey. And on top of that, they didn't have no type of waiver, no, no nothing. And when I found this dentist, I actually found them through a phone call. You know, it's like an automated phone call. They have plans. So I went in on this plan and the plan that I was paying for was 5000 It was like um, like 5500 something like that. And, it, and I got to get eight crowns, um, five crowns. I'm listening to my house. Five root canals and a partial and a couple of feelings and extractions. Okay. So with the plan, you get half off. Okay. And this is good for like the entire year. All right. But in order to be part of the plan, you have to pay your membership fee, one time membership fee of one hundred and fifty dollars. And each additional person that you add from your family is seventy five dollars. And then they also get the plan. So it's either me getting that plan that I just mentioned to you or spending a little bit over eight thousand and getting twelve crowns and then the rest of the same work, but no partial. So I decided just to get the partial. Now I'm like, hmm. But either way, anyway, so I was all excited to go to the new office, you know, because I had already got some work done prior, um, you know, with my two teeth in front. I had to get two root canals because my prior dentist out here, he gave me four fillings in the front and he traumatized my teeth so bad to the point where now I got abscess and I had to get root canals on them. So I didn't even deal with them no more, but I am going to surely be... um going for my money. So anyway, you know, I went to my new dentist. Um, it's called Unlimited Dentistry. I went there and I got some of the work done and I was supposed to come back on the 6th of March and get like more work done and get my crowns fitted and everything. So when I went, I called on Monday just to confirm, like, listen, I just want to know, make sure this is at nine o'clock because the bitch wanted to be there. Like I was excited. Like you don't never be excited to go to the dentist, but I was motherfucking excited to get there. So the answering service tells me, well, the office didn't open up yet. They won't be ready for another two weeks. So you're going to have to wait. I was like, I'm not about to wait two weeks 
for my tooth to get fixed when I got a fucking headache and an earache. Not We're not about to do that. But I didn't use the curse words. I didn't use the F-bombs to her. But I just told her, I'm not going to wait. Um. Oh, shit. Okay, this is crazy. <sighs> Why did I just get a text message from my son's girlfriend? And I don't know if it's my son texting me from there or what. But he just, one of them just texted me. Oh, shit. It was like, hey, ma, you're going to be a grandma again for the third time. What the fuck? Oh, shit. Wow. Oh, I was a little girl. Oh, my God. Wow. Wow. I was like, are you serious? Why are you serious? They're like, yeah. Wow. Wow. Oh, shoot. Holy shit. <laughs> wow. Now I'm really getting old. I wouldn't joke like that to you. LOL. I think this is my son writing me. Who's this? Who's this? Or Shireen. Wow. Oh, shit. I said I'm going to call him in a little while. Just give me a few minutes. Wow. I'm about to be grandmother again for the third time. That's fucking crazy, right? Like, this is amazing. I don't know if I should cry or just, like, this is Sharice. It's my daughter-in-law. Oh, my God. Oh, shit. Wow. Oh, dang. <laughs> oh, this is the best news. Oh, wow. Ah, shit. I hope it's a little girl, okay? Oh, wow. This is crazy. Oh, shit. So let me... Okay, where was I? Oh, dang. That's like perfect timing, like for real. Oh, my God. Oh. <laughs> so, <laughs> oh, shit. Damn. Okay, so, um, okay, so where the fuck was I? All right, so I'm sitting, I'm, I'm, I'm like telling her I'm not gonna wait because my face is hurting, like my face is freaking hurting, and um, she says, well, you know, I can schedule you for our other office. You know, they have, you know, they have, a, he has another office. So Dr. Cooperman works in another office. This is, you know, like an extension, sister company, whatever, sister site, whatever, and um. It's in Happy Valley. So it's like a 30-minute drive, 27-minute drive. So I was like, all right, so can I, go, can I come in tomorrow? Because that was when my appointment was supposed to be. And well, let me just put you through to that particular office. So they put me through. Long story short, they couldn't get me in until Friday. I was not too happy, but I was like, all right, cool, whatever. At least I don't got to wait two weeks. So Friday comes, I drive my happy ass 30 minutes away, you know, and I have the remainder balance that I owe the dentist, which was $2,581.75. So I had to pay that twice. So whatever that is added up, that's how much my plan is. $2,581 times, times it by two. That's how much I had to pay. So... I get there and, you know, I didn't have to sit for but maybe like two minutes. They, they call me back and the lady, the, um, the lady from the Avondale office where I'm from, you know, she, um, she, she calls me the day before and asks me if I could send her a screenshot of my plan because they have everything packaged up. She wants to send it over to the other office so they know what I'm getting, how much I owe and et cetera. So I text her photos of it. And when I get there, they're like, um, you know, they're just like, well, what is the, what tooth is it? I said, yeah, it's the tooth back here on the bottom right next to the one that's all the way in the back. They said, well, that's not tooth 30 and, and 31. I don't know. All I know is it's this one. And I told Gaylene, the one who called me about the plan to text it to her. And I told her what tooth it was. They said, well, they, she told us it was tooth 20, 19 and 20. Either way, it doesn't fucking matter. 
you can't just fix a tooth. That's not what I said to them, though. I was like, what is this tooth? So then they said, okay. So Gaylene had already told me, and this is the assistant, the office assistant. She told me the day prior, listen, you are to pay this amount and this amount only. I said, well, what happened to the $2,581 that remained the balance? She said, no, you'll just pay that to us. But, you know, all you got to do is pay them $528. And whatever, whatever left from, the, you know, you give us the balance of it. So instead of me paying the whole entire balance, just pay $528. Then I'll give her the rest, the remainder of it. I was like, okay. So when the dental hygienist and office girl in the front came to me in Happy Valley and was basically like, well, it's 900 and something dollars. I said, no, it's not. Because Gaylene told me it was 528. And she was like, well, aren't you getting, um, it's two different teeth now. And uh, she said, it's a different tooth now. I said, okay, that's fine. But it's the exact same problem. She said, well, yeah, but you're, you're getting, um, Aren't you getting a root canal, um, a buildup, um, some kind of medication in it, and a crowning? I said, that's not what I was told I was getting today. What I told I was getting was the root canal. That's it. I wasn't getting the crowning, okay? She said, well, that's not what it says up front. I said, well, listen, this is what Gaylene told me, okay? So she goes and she checks, and then Dr. Cooperman comes, um, and he, you know, he's like, hey, April, what's up? And like I told you, I love Dr. Cooperman. He is amazing, okay? He's amazing. Like, you ever have a dentist that's, like, so cool? He give you the pound. He be talking about social media. His his whole bedside manner is, like, so, like, amazing. Like, I, I'm just like, wow, If wherever Dr. Cooperman goes, I'm going. So I was like, oh, I'm good. I'm good. I didn't even tell him the problem. So then she comes back, the girl. And she says to me, well, um, it's going to actually be 400 and I think it was like 430 or something. I was like, okay, that's fine. So I'm ready and they're, they're like getting me ready. They, they, you know, they're prepping me up and, um, and I'm saying to her, she's like, well, she says, um, to me, the girl, she says, she says, well, um, that's how much it, it, it is in their office, but our office is a different price. I said, excuse me? Uh, she said, well, it would have been $428 for, your, for um, Dr. Cooperman's other office, but for this office, it's a different price. I said, okay, and whose fault is that? She said, well, we do the same plan like you're on, but ours is, our prices are a little bit different. Okay, and your point is? Because I'm looking at her, I'm like, and your point is, everything I'm saying to you, I'm saying to her. She's like, well, I'm just telling you that it's 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 not really 430 here. It's like six or five or some change because the plan is different. Because I said, listen, it ain't my problem that they didn't offer that open that office yet. My appointment was for the 6th of March at the Avondale office, not all the way out here in Happy Valley. You really think that I'm going to sit here and pay you an extra fee because I had to come out here against my own free will? I didn't even want to be here. I don't even want to be here. She said, well, I'm just, I said, and I'm just saying to you that it's not my problem why they didn't open an office in two weeks. This is your sister office. I didn't make the appointment for here. I made it originally for there. I was told to come here because this is where Dr. Cooperman's other office is at. Okay. So then she says, well, Dr. Cooperman is not going back to that office anymore. He's going to be here. And I was like, excuse me. So she goes, well, he's not going to be working at the other office in Avenue. I said, so you're telling me that Dr. Cooperman is going to stay here and work for now on? She was like, yeah. I was like, all right. All right. I said, but listen, all right, cool. So then um, I was, I get on my phone and I'm texting Gaylene because at this point, my whole side of my face is like, um, you know, hurting and I'm about to spaz off. So I'm like, woosah to myself. So then Dr. Cooperman comes and he was like, is everything all right, April? Because I was being very stern. I wasn't loud, but I'm pretty sure she went back there and told him how I was acting towards her, but I could care less, you know, and I said, I told him what the issue was. And I said to him, I'm not about to pay no extra because your other office wasn't open. That ain't my problem. And he was like, no, you're not about to pay extra. You're right. So he said to her, listen, this is what she's getting done today. And this is it. Then the guy, his, his hygienist comes and he was like, well, it says in the computer that she's getting this, this, and this done. And he was like, she's not getting that done. So he says, okay. 
He goes away, Dr. Kumi is like, don't worry about nothing. Now I'm already numb, okay? I'm numb by now because they already shot that shit in my face. I was like, he says, let me give you a few minutes to wear on. Cool, can I go to the bathroom? Because now my nerves is bad and I just need to use the bathroom. So I go to the bathroom and Gaylene calls me. And I'm telling her, like, listen, because I texted her message, like, I'm about to go off with them here. She was like, just give them, um, she's like, well, Dr. That, she said, Dr. Cooperman said you was getting A, B, and C done. I said, no, Dr. Cooperman just told me and the guy, Oscar, his hygienist, that I was getting A done, not A, B, and C. She said, well, they're telling me in the front that on the computer says A, B, and C. I said, I'm telling you from verbal uh, from verbal agreement with Dr. Cooperman just now that I'm just getting A done because he wants to put medicine, patient, medication in my root canal so that way it heals properly. So I, I leave the bathroom and I'm still on the phone with her. And Dr. Cooperman is standing right there and so is Oscar and that girl. Dr. Cooperman ain't even near yet, excuse me. So I'm on the phone and I got Gaylene now on speakerphone. So I'm speaking to the hygienist guy, Oscar, and the girl from the front desk. We just gonna call her Trish. Um, Trish is telling me like, um, you know, about the plan again. I said, listen, I'm gonna tell you this straight up like this. I don't know what's going on here at the office, but I got Gaylene on speaker telling me that I'm getting A, B, and C done. I got Dr. Cooperman telling you, me and Oscar that I'm getting A done, okay? And she's still telling me I'm getting A, B, and C done. You coming over here telling me I'm getting X, Y, Z done, okay? So that was my husband. I had to tell him real quick about the news. So anyway, so, you know, I'm telling her, listen, y'all, you telling me one thing, you telling me another, and Dr. Cooperman and Gaylene is telling me two different things. And I'm not really here for all of this. I done already been through bull crap with my other dentist. And I had to say crap because I really didn't want to curse. I said with the other dentist who done messed up on my teeth. I said, in a minute, I'm about to walk out of here with face on now because now I'm starting to feel like y'all playing with my money and my emotions. And we don't play with my money and we damn sure ain't about to play with my emotions. My emotions come from my teeth, all right? I've been sitting around for like a week and a half with my face hurting. And you telling me one thing, he telling me another. And I'm not really trying to hear you. I said, so y'all need to get it together today because y'all going to do something on my tooth and y'all going to get it right. So they just looking at me like, then Dr. Cooper may hear me going off, but I'm still not loud. But, you know, you can tell that I'm going off. Well, he comes. He's like, what's the matter? What's going on? I'm like, Gaylene on the phone talking about how, and I still got on the phone, how she done got a call from them talking about I'm getting A, B, and C done and to give them this. Why did Gaylene ask, hang the fuck up? All right. I guess I must have hurt her feelings. Dr. Cooperman was like, well, she's not getting A, B, and C done. I told you guys already she was getting A. And I said, and what is this about you? You're leaving? I said, you're, you're not going to be working at the other office in Avondale? He was like, what are you talking about? I was like, that's what she told me, Trish. And she was like, I didn't tell you that. I said, you didn't just stand here and tell me that Dr. Cooperman was not going to be working at the other office? She was like, no. I said, I asked you. So you mean to tell me that Dr. Cooperman is not going to be in the Avondale office anymore? And you said, correct, he's going to be working here from now on. Isn't that what you just told me? Well, I didn't really know. That's what I meant. I didn't really know. I said, so you don't really know, but this is what you tell me? So you, you didn't even know, but you're telling me it's this. And she was like, yeah. I said, okay. And I said, and as for you, Oscar, you just stood up here and told me I was going to get A, B, and C done. When Dr. Cooperman already told you like 10 minutes ago that I wasn't. And you just said it again. And he was like, well, I meant for the next visit to come. I said, no, 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 no. The next visit wouldn't come, okay, with me getting A, B, and C done. I would only get B and C done, all right? I said, listen, I don't have time for this. I'm about to leave, Dr. Kuberman. Dr. Kuberman was like, please don't leave. Please don't leave. This is what we're going to do. Gaylene comes and texts me. She was like, well... You can just pay Dr. Cooperman the entire balance and we'll just take care of it from there. So I ended up getting A, B, and C done, but I was so fucking frustrated and pissed the fuck off. And Dr. Cooperman just kept apologizing and apologizing and apologizing to me about how sorry he was for like the shit that I was going through and everything. Like, let me tell y'all something. I don't, you know, I never try to be mean to nobody because that's not my, that's just not me as a person. I don't really feel like I should have to be mean to anybody because I don't want to be mean to anybody. It just takes a whole lot more energy to, for me to walk the fuck around and be mean to somebody. Like, seriously, I'm not about to do that. 
But I'm not about to have you dick me around, okay? Like, seriously, like, we're not about to dick ape around. And you damn sure not about to dig me around for my teeth. You might could dig me around for something else, but when it comes to my teeth, that's about to be a no-no. Let me tell y'all, I don't have the best motherfucking teeth in the world, but I am trying to get them somewhere near the best motherfucking teeth in the world. You know what I'm saying? The little bit of teeth that I do have left, I'm trying to hold on to the motherfuckers. Like, seriously, I got to get a root canal. I got to get a bridge. I got to get crowns. Like, I'm trying to keep my shit intact. And then, you know, I got a, um, I got a missing tooth here. And then I got, um, I got the work done in the back. So now I have a temporary crown on until my, my new one comes in. Then I have to go get these two replaced because these are temporary too. Well, this, they're just filled in because I had a root canal. So now I have to go back and get them shaved down and get a temporary tooth over. Let me tell y'all. I don't have time for people and they bullshit. This is the shit that I had to go through. And then my son keep getting on my fucking nerves. And now I get this call about my grand, my, my new grandchild. Like, these motherfuckers is really killing me. Like, I'm about to be really old right now. Like, I'm about to have three grandkids. Like, dang. Okay? Oof. Child. Them motherfuckers better get married because they, they've been together for a long time. And now they're going to have two kids. Them motherfuckers. I cannot wait to see them next month. Them motherfuckers better. They better get married. For real. Them motherfuckers better get married. Well, then that, that's my, that, that's how it's been going for me. So now y'all know when I found out that I'm about to be a grandmother for the third fucking time. So congratulations to my son and his girlfriend, cause I'm so happy for them. And like, seriously, that was like an amazing news. Like, I really hope it's a little girl. Like for real, I really, really hope it's a little girl. Oh man, I really do. Cause these little boys are something else. Seriously. So anyway, so let's get into this um, real talk. If you guys have a real talk that you want me to elaborate on, you know, um, talk about it. You know what I'm saying? Just talk about it. You can go ahead and send me an email to MufflinsMyLovers2012 at gmail.com. Make sure you put in the subject line, real talk. And on that note, we're going to get into this, okay? Huh? 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 <laughs> All right, you guys, so this one is, um, I'm not really sure if this is her real name or not, so we're just going to change it, okay? Hey, April, this is Cheryl. I'm from Cali, and I want to start off by saying that I love you, and I love your YouTube videos. I recently came across your Real Talk videos, and I realized that you give the best advice ever. I like the fact that you keep it real. So lately, I've been going through some things, but I really don't know who to turn to for advice, so I decided to email you for that reason. Hopefully, you'll read my email. So basically, I met this dude named Juan when I was in the seventh grade. He was in the ninth grade at that time, and obviously we both went to different schools, but I would still see him around my school campus constantly because some of his friends went there. <clears throat> okay, so I kept seeing Juan around and throughout time. I ended up developing a huge crush on him. Like literally, in my eyes, he was the finest dude on earth. So I ended up adding him on Facebook, and over time, he started texting me, and we started getting to know each other. We started talking once I reached the eighth grade, but we never got into anything serious. All right. So when I entered the ninth grade, I enrolled at the school that he was in, but I had kind of forgotten about him. So I wasn't really expecting anything to happen, if that makes sense to you. But one day I realized that he was in my fifth period class. And from that on, from that point on, he started flirting with me. So we ended up talking again. And eventually we ended up in a relationship with each other, but we were on and off because he started playing games. So I was just about to give up on him till he attempted to win me back. I played hard to get for about six months then since then, and Juan really kept trying to fix things, but I was so hurt. I didn't let him see me for six months straight. As I mentioned before, he had moved um, to another school by this point. So I didn't let him see me for like six months. 
Anyways, I celebrated my birthday, my 15th birthday, and I had a birthday party on October 2017. So now we get how old this person is. And to my surprise, Juan showed up. It had then been eight months since the last time I saw him. So I was shook, but I tried not to show that my feelings were still there. So the day after my party, he texted me and asked me on a date, and I finally agreed to go out with him. We ended up going out to eat, and we talked things out on the same day, et cetera, et cetera. Then we kept seeing each other, and I ended up going back to being in a relationship with him. So basically, I took him back after all the effort he had put in to earn me back. So four months ago, um, so, so four months ago was when things started getting sexual. I basically lost my virginity to him. He wasn't a virgin though. So things were great. We were having sex at least one to two times, one to two day, one to two days per month. Everything was good until for some reason we started dry texting each other. And I noticed that my feelings for him were fading away. Keep in mind, I really liked this dude. So I was kind of surprised that I was losing feelings for him, but in me, his past mistakes still st stayed buried in my heart and brain. So even though he was being good to me, I felt like he was doing something wrong for some reason. I then started getting ready to start losing my attachment to him. And I decided that the first step to achieve that was to block him on social media. But I never really did it though. So once I came to the conclusion that things were really going down the drain, we decided to meet up yesterday and we just talked about the whole situation. So when we met up, I told him that I might be pregnant because more than one time we didn't use protection. It's stupid, I know, but things happen, LOL. He kept negating it though. He kept denying it, telling me that I can't be pregnant because he used self-control, etc. And he was literally like, how are you going to tell me? I took sex ed and you didn't. I was pissed at this point, but I controlled myself. So finally he asked me, that if I do turn out to be pregnant, what am I going to do? He was like, are you going to abort? Are you going to abort? But since I personally don't believe in abortion, I said no, because of, because to me, that would be killing a human being to which he replied, what the fuck? No, that's an orgasm. Oh, excuse me. It looked like she spelled it wrong. That's an organism. Wait, so what? I said, no, that would be like killing a human being to which he replied, what the fuck? No, that's an organism. So you're going to have a kid as a 10th grader. That's hella dumb. He even told me that taking a pregnancy test wasn't necessary due to show uh, for sure that I was pregnant and that he is that I'm not pregnant. He told me that the symptoms I'm feeling are probably due to stress and my period coming soon, etc. But generally he said my symptoms are fake. I think something's wrong with him because despite what he has said previously, he grabbed my stomach and said, oh, you're going to get kicked by the baby. It was weird. So after a bit, we got, we both were silent until he started asking me what was wrong. I was like, you, you don't care about me. I feel so used to which he said used. Trust me. I can have sex with whoever I want just because you want to have sex and I want to have sex doesn't mean I'm using you and you think I don't care. If I didn't care, I would just ignore you and not talk to you. Well, you probably think I don't care because I didn't panic when you said that you think you're pregnant, but that's only because I know that you're not. After that, he tried holding my hand and kissing me, but I wasn't feeling it anymore for some reason. I didn't feel the affection I used to feel before, I guess. Then suddenly I got an anxiety attack. Juan didn't even know how to react. He fell in silence. And when he saw that I was really struggling, he pulled me into him. And soon we found ourselves having sex. I pushed him away instantly, although I pushed him away in the middle of the action. But he didn't want to let me go. Eventually he decided to stop out of nowhere. And he became worried for some reason. He was panicking for some reason, and then I told him to drop me off because I never wanted to see him again. So when he dropped me off, he was like, you're not pregnant, and don't think you'll get pregnant off of today because I used a condom. And when I went on social media yesterday, I realized that he had blocked me. 
He also missed school today. Like, oh my, I'm so confused. I know he cares for me. Maybe he was just nervous yesterday, but then why would he block me? I'm so devastated. Maybe time is all we need, but I really would like your opinion and perhaps your advice on this crazy situation. Thank you so much for your time, and I really hope to hear back from you. Shirley. Okay, first of all, I got to take the top off of this. <clears throat> <clears throat> my throat is like, oh my God. So first of all, when I first started reading this email, it sounded like, you know, a person like in, of an adult age. I got a motherfucking 15 year old writing me about having sex with some boy who's 17 year old. Okay. Because he's like two year, two grades ahead of her. So he's like 17. And you know what I'm saying? Now, mind you, my daughter is 15. My daughter, Nay, is 15. I would fucking kill her, okay? This is what I be talking about about these kids today. They don't know what the fuck they want to do with themselves. They want to go have relationships and go get pregnant and have babies. She talk about, no, she don't believe in abortions. That's like killing a human being. Girl, you ain't even fucking grow up yet to talk about killing a, um, killing a human being. You don't even know what it's like to have a fucking baby. And, you know, I'm not agreeing with him and I'm not agreeing with her. But there is something in the motherfucking water that these kids be drinking that it only affects young brains because these motherfucking kids be acting stupid as fuck, okay? Stupid as fuck. Now, you 15-year-old and you writing me, I don't even know why the fuck you even watching my Real Talk videos in the first place at 15. My, like, I don't really think like a 15-year-old should be even watching my fucking videos. Maybe I should make this shit to where you gotta, even if you said you was over 18, it doesn't even fucking matter. But, you know what I'm saying, the first thing she need to do is, is, is fucking go to school and stop worrying about some boy who, he doesn't care about you, honey. He's 17 years old. This is the thing that I, I mean, like, when I was, when I was in, t in high school, you know, I had a boyfriend. I never fucking thought in a million years that me and him was going to be together for the rest of our lives. I never even thought about that shit. Like, seriously, that didn't even go through my mind at the time. It didn't even go through my head. When I got pregnant when I was 17... And my son's father, I didn't even think me and him was going to be together for the rest of our lives. I left Pennsylvania and moved back home to New York and left him. I didn't even think about it. I didn't even think twice about it. Like, who the fuck thinks about having babies at 15 years old? Like, bitch, you motherfuckers should be playing with motherfucking Barbies or doing your schoolwork or something. These kids got too much fucking leeway and shit. All on social media, blocking each other, talking about having sex. Like, I was not cool with reading none of this shit. If I knew her mother, I would be fucking emailing her mama, letting her mama know. Listen, your daughter Shirley is having sex with some 17-year-old boy, talking about she might be pregnant. Now she's devastated that the boy done blocked her because she feels like he really does care. No, sweetheart, okay? Um, he doesn't care. Now, if you were my daughter, I would have you by the throat. But since you're not, I'm going to tell you like this, honey. At your age, a sweetheart, you really need to stop worrying about boys and worry about the books. Worry about that. Not no fucking boys. Boys are going to be boys. They're going to be here when you get older. And you know what? They're going to still act the same fucking way. Childish and immature. They're not going to worry about what's what you got on your mind or worry about what you're doing. They worry about what's in between your legs right now. Just like he said, he can have sex with whoever he want, whenever he want. Okay. So if some guy was to say that to me, I wouldn't give a fuck if he was 15, 17 or whatever. You say that to me and we supposed to be in a relationship. I'm about to cut you off the real quick, real, real quick. Like you, you're not even going to know you got cut off that quick. You just, your head going to be spinning. Because I'm going to cut you off that motherfucking fast that you're going to have amnesia. You're going to be like, who are you? Because you ain't even going to remember me. I'm going to cut you off that motherfucking fast. Okay? You got these kids that's 15 years old talking about they want to have sex with each other. And then, you know, she's tell like, I was not comfortable with reading the part where she says, and then we ended up having sex again. What should you do as some advice? The only advice that I can give to you, sweetheart, because you are 15 and you are a minor, is to go to fucking school and stop worrying about these knucklehead boys. These motherfucking boys is knuckleheads. Straight up knuckleheads. They don't even care about themselves anymore. And I could honestly, truly say this because when I watch these children, these teenagers today, and I see how they act towards adults and older people, they have no morals. They have no values. They have no self-worth. They have no 
fucking respect. They will cut you in a minute. They will hurt you in a minute. They will curse you out in a minute. They don't give a fuck about nobody. They don't even give a fuck about themselves, okay? And she's so worried about some boy who could care less. If he really cared about you, then he would not be saying he could fuck anybody whenever he wants. Like, like no, nobody say anything like that about to the person that they supposedly care about. And on top of that, what are you even having a boyfriend for at the age of 15 or 14? You just had a birthday and he came in. So you was in like the seventh grade worried about some boy. This is what I be talking about, about the youth today. They just don't know what the fuck to do with themselves. They have too much free time on their hand. And all that free time that they have, they need to just put their faces in the books and study and do their schoolwork. But no, they want to worry about what's on the fucking social media. What's the fucking going on with these boys down the street? Arguing and fighting in the latest trends. Like, you know, I'm, I'm so glad that my daughter, who's 15, does not act like that. Like... I'm so glad because I would be in jail right now if she did. Maybe that's because I'm crazy and they are scared to death of me and they think I'm crazy. My kids my kids literally think that I'm crazy. They have said this before to my husband, like, mommy's crazy. She's mean. You're not mean like her. She's crazy. Mommy says the craziest stuff. Like, I would tell them all the time, don't fuck with me because I'll have your ass spinning from that fucking ceiling fan. I will tie your ass up and rip your fucking legs off. I would threaten my kids with all kind of shit. To the point where they probably thought I was crazy. But you know what? That crazy shot of me, they don't be running around hoeing and shit. And I'm not saying that you hoeing, but at 15 years old, I don't think that you should be having sex. But you know what? You can't force them to not have sex, but you damn sure shouldn't be worried about having no fucking baby. Like, listen, everybody is entitled to their own motherfucking opinions, okay? They own opinions. But I tell you what, sweetheart, if you was my daughter who was 15... And you ended up getting pregnant, you best believe you're going to the doctor to have an abortion. Because I'm not about to take care of your motherfucking baby. Like, yeah, I'm happy to be a grandmother, but not to no 15-year-old. Y'all think that this shit is so cute and easy. You know what I'm saying? Like, oh, it's just a baby. <laughs> I could buy a diapers and I could get it, this and that. Y'all think that just money is going to take care of a baby. No. When you immature, your immaturity rubs off on your child which makes your motherfucking child real fucking dumb down. That's what I think that's wrong with the world today. And I think that's what's wrong with these young teenagers today is that people kept having babies at early ages and early ages and young ages and young ages. You know what I'm saying? Like me, I had a baby when I was 17. However, my mom had me when she was 20. My mom was a good mom. And she was very strict. So, you know, that was perfect. And me, I was young. I had it when I was 18. I turned 18 and I acted just like my mom. You know what I'm saying? So my values were the same as her, but t like probably 10 times worse. She always says that I'm, I'm, I'm like 10 times worse than her as a parent, which is cool. But then you have your own kids and then they start having kids early and then their kids have kids early. And that's how you get these 15 year olds and 13 and 12 year olds and 10 years olds that think that it's okay to be disrespectful to people and to disrespect themselves and their bodies. That's why you got these 12, 13, 14 year olds talking about catch me outside, catch me outside. Or one of them that's a white girl thinks she black. You know what I'm saying? She's talking about, I am black. Bitch, you white as the motherfucking snow. And you on fucking social media talking about I'm black. She thinks she black. That's why these kids are so fucking stupid. Or you got them on these talk shows talking about, you know, you got these poor mothers on these talk shows with Maury and Dr. Phil talking about, I can't control her. She curses me out and threatens me. Bitch, first of all, I'm not about to bring my business on fucking TV or no type of fucking social media talking about my kid be threatening me, cursing me the fuck out and taking my shit and taking advantage of me. Nah, we're not about to do that. What we're about to do is this. I'm about to take you outside. I'm about to fuck your ass up. You will never catch me on no show like that. Never. You ain't about to have me going crazy. That's why these kids be acting crazy like that. At 15 year old, they just be doing the dumbest shit. Like, you know, mine's, he's 19, about to be 20. And his shit is not even dumb like that, this shit that they do. But I feel like it's dumb for him because he's 19. You know what I mean? But I, I, like, I never had to go through no shit with my kids at this age. Like, I would, let me tell you something. Shirley, as a mother of a 15 year old daughter, you better get it together, sweetheart, because before you know it, you're going to have time passing you by. And if you are having a baby, you're going to really wish that, oh, my God, I didn't. 
it's you know everybody's entitled to their opinion about abortion and non-abortion all of this shit that's great dandy but let me tell you something <laughs> sweetheart it ain't easy having no kid and if he blocked you from social media sweetheart that means he don't give a fuck about you so stop trying to pretend like he cares and stop being in denial about it and just face the facts that he does not care he showed you he didn't care when he told you he could have sex with whoever and now he's telling you like get off my social media i don't want to have contact with you i gotta turn the fan on i had to turn the fan on because i was getting hot and i felt like my chest was caving in um so if he really did care about you he wouldn't have blocked you and he damn sure wouldn't have told you that he could have sex with whoever he want like who tells somebody some shit like that listen sweetheart the first person you really need to talk to and get some advice from is your mother okay you need to have a good talk with your mama because you are out of control and your mother needs to get you back in control and i'm pretty sure you're not gonna tell your mother but as a parent Take it from me, sweetheart. It ain't easy. And I appreciate you watching my videos and reaching out to me. I'm glad that you did. But I want to tell you honestly, like, please, don't worry about these young boys. They aren't worried about y'all young girls, okay? They're not like they used to be back in the days before my time, sweetheart. Even before my time, okay? When, they was, when, they, when I was your age, they wasn't nice then. They weren't too concerned in. So could you imagine over time, I'm 43. Time has evolved and so has these boys, meaning not in a good way. You know, you lost your virginity, uh, that's unfortunate, but you ain't lose your motherfucking mind. And if you're not pregnant, sweetheart, just forget about him because he's not worth it. And just worry about your school because you're in the 10th grade, girl, please. I have sex when I was in the 10th grade. No, but well, I was in 11, right? No, I was, in I was in 12th grade, excuse me. And then I dropped out. But just take it from me as a person who has went through this. Even though I was only 17 when I got pregnant, I was older than you. You know, trust me, sweetie, it's not easy at all. I still struggle to this day because, you know, I didn't do what I was supposed to do like my mother told me. So unfortunately, I reap what I sowed, you know what I'm saying? But listen, girl, fuck Juan. Fuck his ass and let him go about his business. Let him be somebody else's headache. For real. Ugh. These kids will drive you to drink. Just just worry about school, Shirley. Worry about school. We're going to move on to the next one because that one just took me for a loophole. Okay, so this one is really short and sweet. Hey, April. My name is Jeanette, and I wanted to ask... <clears throat> I typically get men that are married or in a relationship that come and approach me. I am 41 years old and 41 year old woman. And I promise you that I want my own man and I want a real relationship. I don't want to be with a man that's married or in a relationship. Anyways, I was told that I attract those type of men. Please explain how I don't approach men as I am old school and I wait for them to approach me. I won't change my appearance, but I am looking for suggestions on what you think I need to do. Just want your opinion. All right, Jeanette. So first of all, Jeanette is having issues, but she says the only men that are approaching her are men that are in a relationship or that are married. And then she's also been told that that's the type of men she attracts. Okay. Also, she says she ain't about to change her appearance. Second of all, she said that she don't want nobody else's man. She want her own man, her own relationship. What should she do? Now, I don't know what you've been doing, sweetheart, but let me tell you something. If that's the only man you attract, then, hey, I don't know what to tell you. But I can tell you this. That's what somebody told you. Don't believe the hype, okay? That is in a man's nature. If you're looking hot to try and you're looking good as a motherfucker and you're looking like a snack, a whole snack and a meal and some dessert, <laughs> If a man got his tail between his legs, he got his tail between his legs, sweetheart. And he going to talk to you. You can't change who you are because men that attract you are dogs. That are attracted to you are dogs. You know what I'm saying? Meaning, if the men that are attracting to you are dogs because they like to cheat on their wives and shit, then that's what the fuck they are. You don't have to change anything about yourself. However, if you are going to places where married men hang out, then maybe that's what you might want to stop doing. But if you aren't, then sweetheart... It ain't nothing that you're doing. Not that I know of. Like, I don't know. 
I, I, I mean, has anybody only attracted just married men? I don't think that there is a stipulation to what men want to look at. Like, you know, I feel like maybe she's in, in the wrong area. Maybe she's in like an area where there is nothing but married men, you know, saying a men in relationships. Maybe it's where you're hanging out at that you're attracting that type of man. If that's what you're attracting at that particular place, I would suggest, you know, finding somewhere else to hang out. Um, I really can't tell you, um, but I would know this. Like, um, don't change your appearance for anybody. So what are you going to change your appearance and become homely and wholesome looking? If that's what you're looking like now, or are you going to go total opposite and be like a sex symbol? Either way, sweetheart. Men or men, they're going to be dogs. If they got their tail between their legs, they got their tail between their legs. And I don't really know about attracting just married men. I mean, like, seriously, I think I have probably attracted quite a few, too. But um, I don't fuck with nobody sloppy seconds. I damn sure don't want you. I already got a man anyway, a husband. But, um, yeah, that's not cool um, when you got men that are married attracting themselves to you, like, you know, it is what it is. I don't really know how to answer that one because, like, ugh, I never knew, you know, a, such a thing. Well, she got, like, a magnet that says, I only want married men. And then there could be the part that it's, like, some women only want to fuck with married men because they don't want the responsibility and the commitment of seeing this man all the time. You know what I'm saying? So it could be where you hanging out at. And if you hanging out somewhere that there's nothing but married men, then bitch, find a new place to hang the fuck out at so that way you don't try to take nobody else's man. Bottom line, okay? Um, but I wish you the best, Jeanette. I really do. Okay, so this one is kind of like a, 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 not a recap, but I did speak to this young lady a year ago. Hi, April. Thank you for taking the time to read this email. You may or may not remember me, but I wrote to you over a year ago regarding my situation with my husband. My name is Gwen, fake name. The last time I wrote to you, my husband was threatening to leave me and our three children because he said I wasn't making him happy and I didn't make enough money. I was making $17 an hour and he was making 30. I was so hurt and devastated. My soul was broken and my heart was in a million pieces. All I did was cry because I didn't want my husband, the man that I had three kids with and spent 11 years of my life with, to leave me. Well, a couple of months after I wrote to you, he packed up and left. He got an apartment and I found out from my oldest son that he had a woman and her child spending the night there on weekends he had our children over. I asked him about this and he told me it wasn't my business, but the girl was only a friend with no benefits. I told him that it made me uncomfortable since we were still married. He said it doesn't matter because we're getting a divorce and he didn't want me anymore. As painful as it was, I let go. I accepted the fact that he didn't want me anymore and I started to move on my life without him. I asked him for $500 per month to help out with our seven-year-old and our two-year-old twins. And he told me no. He said, if you can't afford your children, give them to me. Or go out and hustle like a real mother. I ended up filing for child support. They gave me $1,500 per month. And I was only asking him for five. He was enraged. He called me every type of bitch he could think of. I didn't really know there was so many bitches. I tried explaining that daycare for the twins alone is $1,900 per month. My husband ended up moving back into our house after I filed for child support and after hearing about me on a date with another man. He moved in against my wishes and emphasized that he did not want to be with me. He only came back for his children. I had no choice but to stay there for a couple of weeks until I could find a place for me and my three babies to live. The police were there multiple times because of his anger and his temper tantrums. From learning about my date, okay? As soon as I could, I left everything except for a few clothes for my kids and myself, and we moved in with my cousin. Three months later, the kids and I got our own apartment, and that's when I met Brian, fake name. I wasn't looking for anyone. I just filed for divorce, just enrolled in school, was still working full-time, focused on being a better me, and still mastering my own most important job, being a mother. 
Brian is wonderful. He's so sweet, supportive, attentive, does anything to put a smile on my face. He has given me his last, treats me like a queen, surprises me with gifts, showers me with affection. He just loves me, and I love him. April, this is the first time that I've never had to question a man's love for me. He admitted to me that he was a felon selling drugs and gun charges in 2005. But he still managed to get a great job at one of the top factories here, making $27 an hour. He has one child, a three-year-old, and that he absolutely adores, and our kids are love each other. Our children love each other. I need you to let me know if I'm wrong, because I highly value your opinion. My husband found out about Brian and asked me if we could stop the divorce process and try marriage counseling before throwing away our marriage away. He said if I stop seeing Brian, he'll cut off any woman he's been talking to. I told him, hell no. I feel like I would be a fool to go back to the man who rejected me, put me down, and made me feel not good enough, not worthy. Whether Brian was in the picture or not, I just love me. I just love me too much now to accept anything less than what I deserve. A friend of mine said I was wrong because I'm still legally married and I should have given my husband another chance. I don't feel that way. He made his decision. Now, um, he's made his decision, not me. Basically, he made his bed. I let go and I moved on. Meeting Brian was a pleasant surprise, but becoming a stronger me was the ultimate goal. And I got there. Would you give him another chance? Thank you again, beautiful. I've included pictures of me, my kids, and my new boo. I love you, girly, and wish you all the happiness and blessings you can handle. Wow. Just reading this gave me chills, like, for real. Like, on some real shit, this just gave me chills. Like, seriously, this is what I'm talking about. Like, you know what I'm saying? It wasn't even nothing bad. I got, like, goosebumps and shit, okay? Like, it, it wasn't even nothing bad. Like, seriously, like... You know, I remember her story. She wrote me a year ago. Gwen wrote me a year ago. And I remember I remember because her husband was complaining that she wasn't making enough money and so he was gonna leave her. So what? She makes seventeen dollars and he make thirty. He act like he making um he made thirty he act like he make a hundred dollars an hour. Like nigga, please, you make it thirty dollars. You ain't all of that. You're not on baller status. He left her because he already was fucking with somebody. That's what I feel in my heart. Her husband wanted to already start fucking with other women. That's why he left her. Had nothing to do about money. Who leaves somebody because they not making a certain amount? That does not make any fucking sense. And you know, Gwen was devastated, heartbroken. Like she felt like her life was coming to an end probably. Because this man who she's been with of 11 years has three kids to want to go ahead and, and leave her. She asked him for $500 a month child support. This motherfucker said, no, if you can't afford your children, then give them to me. First of all, had a motherfucker told me that, nigga, you better hope you got a job and some motherfucking wheels to get there too. Because by the time I finish with you, you ain't going to have shit. How dare you say some shit like that to your wife and the mother of your children? And you don't want to support your children? How dare you? So what did she do? She filed for child support and ended up getting $1,500 a month. All right, honey, three times the amount she was asking for. That's what I'm talking about. And so this sorry nigga had to move his ass back into their home because why? He couldn't afford to live on his own no more. Now he getting jealous and he's still feeling some type of way, you know what I'm saying, because she was dating and, you know, she was she was moved on with her life. He moved back in. What does Gwen do? She move out. She find her place and she start dating again. Now this nigga, her husband, that is soon to be an ex-husband, want to work shit out, want to fucking get back together, go through marriage counseling, telling her how... You know, if they get back together and have marriage counseling, how he'll cut everybody the fuck off, all these other women, you know, that, et cetera, et cetera. She's like hell to the no. She found her. She loved herself too much. She ain't about to go back. She deserved better. But her friends is telling her she's wrong for that. Let me tell you something, sweetheart. You got your new boo. And just like she said, whether um, Brian was there or not, she's happy that she has found herself. And she ain't going back. What do I feel? Let me tell you something, honey. If you happy, then that's all that fucking matters. Okay? It's nice to be married. married, And sometimes, yeah, we might have to work on our marriage together. But let me tell you this much. If your husband then went and left you, moved in and got some other woman staying there and trying to tell you that she's just friend, a friend with no ben benefits, sweetheart, don't believe that shit. There's no way that this woman is supposed to be his friend spending the night over at his house on the weekends and not giving him no motherfucking pussy. Please. I don't even believe that. 
I don't believe that shit at all. Let me tell you something. If you feel good inside and you have moved on and you have bettered yourself and you feel like a whole person now, then sweetheart, do not go back. Okay? You got a new boo who is who 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 cherished the ground you walk on. Why the fuck would you leave gold to go to motherfucking brass? Okay? Or whatever's fucking less than. Why would you leave fucking gold to go to fucking plastic? Okay? That's nice that your husband all of a sudden want to get back together and do marriage counseling. But then it ain't no fucking niceness behind it. He only want to get back with you because you happy and he see that you got a man and that you got it together and you ain't worried about him. Bitch, that nigga ain't worried about you still. He only want to be with you because... You are moving on with your life and you motherfucking happy. Let that nigga stew in his own motherfucking juices, okay? Let that motherfucker stew in his own juices. Because let me tell you this much. Some of y'all probably might not agree with me. And y'all might be like, no, she should get back with her husband and have marriage counseling. Hmm. First of all, I wouldn't get back with that motherfucker. He done left her, moved on. Got other bitches. Don't want to help take care of her kid. And she moved out and left with nothing on her back. And she's happy now. Listen. Honey, file the motherfucking divorce papers. Okay? I'm going to tell you like this. I'm not going to say it's for everybody. Divorce may not be for everybody. But, you know, a part of me is happy that I did it. And part of me isn't happy did it you know up the part of me that's happy that i did it is because it allowed him to improve himself and to change had i still stayed around and just held him down he probably would be the same fucking person but i didn't i left and i moved and i divorced and he changed as a person i'm not saying that your husband is gonna do that but i do i am saying this if you happy and you know that what happiness is and you are are absolutely in bliss and you have achieved your goal of motherfucking happiness because that's what you have achieved do not go backwards don't listen to your friend that bitch probably don't got no motherfucking man and she probably would love to have a fucking man and be desperate to have a man or she's just one of those motherfuckers that's just stupid and then just stick around with her man regardless of what he could probably be fucking in front of her and she probably wouldn't care she'd probably be like well let's just go to marriage counseling while you going to marriage counseling, nigga, I'm going to the fucking um, court system, all right? I might be going to jail first, all right? Listen, Gwen, I'm happy for you that you got it together and you have found happiness and you have pulled yourself together because some women are not even able to do that. Some just cannot move forward. Some just feel like they can't survive without the man and then they end up just going back to him regardless if he's changed or not. They just go back to him. And I don't really think that you should. In my opinion, I don't really think you should. You got this man, he 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 put you down. He talked shit about you. He said you weren't worthy of anything because you didn't make enough money. I remember that email real specific. It was last year when she wrote it. Okay? I remember that. A lot of them I could remember real well. Okay? And that one I remember because of the price thing, the the money, the money thing. You know, and now that she's gotten it together and she's she's reaching her goals. He want to come back in. Listen, he's being selfish once again. And I say he's being selfish once again because he left you because he said that you didn't make enough money, which he didn't. He left you because he had some bitch on the side. That bitch was spending the night. But he was being selfish. And now he's being selfish once again because he, uh, he and then the second time he was being selfish. And there's probably a whole lot of times I don't know about, but just from reading. He moved back in because he couldn't afford to live on his own. So he felt like he would burden you with his presence and his his his, his issues. He would be in the same home with you and, and, and you'd have to move out. So that's why he moved back in the home. Okay, that was being selfish. Then now he's selfish again because he'd rather just go to counseling than to see you happy with somebody else. Man, own up to your shit. Okay, own up to your motherfucking shit on some real shit. Own up to that. If you left me because you felt like I didn't make enough money, nigga, bye. Boy, bye. I'm not worried about you. I'm not worried about the fucking donkey, bus, car, boat you rock and rode in on. 
I don't give a fuck about your feelings. I'm not trying to fucking work out nothing with you. Fuck a marriage counselor because the fucking thing that's going down is the divorce. You know, it's always nice to give somebody another chance. Yeah, maybe, maybe some people do deserve another chance. But in my opinion, I don't think he does. You got yourself a new man. And like you said, even if Brian wasn't in a picture, you have reached your goal of happiness. You have reached your goal of loving you. You have reached your goal of finding yourself and your children are happy. Why the fuck would you go backwards? Because I guarantee you, if you were, your husband would be fucking the next thing smoking a couple of months or a couple of weeks down the line. And I guarantee you, when he tells you that he's going to leave all the other bitches alone and cut them off for you if you get marriage counseling for him, he's not. He's lying. He's motherfucking lying. And I know he's a lie. He's a lie and the truth ain't in him. For real. On some real shit, he's a lie and the truth is not in him. So Gwen, continue being happy. And I'm happy for you and I'm congratulating you just because you have moved on. You have moved on, excuse me, and you have developed yourself as a strong woman, okay? And you know something? It's crazy because it takes some shit for us to really be strong and and do shit on our own and like and like seriously like I was always a strong person. That's why I left but I have become even stronger. A bitch be changing motherfucking headlights and shit and, and parts on her car, oil changes. I do so much shit that a man should do. You know what I'm saying? That it's crazy. But the reason why is because I'm not about to be one of those helpless women that can't do shit on her own because she don't have a man. Like, that's not what I'm about and that's not what I'm about to do. And that's not how I'm raising my daughters to be. So, you know, when I see another woman that is strong and who has hurtled through the bullshit like I have hurtled through, I'm just like amazed and, and happy for them. Because seriously, some women are so fucking weak that they just cannot deal with life on their own. They, they have to have a man. They got to have a man. Okay. And I'm glad that I am not one of those women. Because I see so many of them, and it's just like, damn, bitch, get it together. Like, on some real shit, get it the fucking together. Do shit on your own. Tell her mumsy that she want to go meet to the post office and Sam's Club. Um, you know, I, I hate to see women that be like, well, you know, I want to... I want to be with him because he's got, you know, he's got good education. And he's got a good job. Or uh, I don't want to mess with him. He riding the bus. Bitch, why is you worried about his finances? Worry about your own shit. You, you riding the bus too. What the fuck? Like, seriously, I hate to see women like that. Like, they, um, you know, you always worry. Some women are just worried about what a man got. Worry about what the fuck you got. Because if you get with a man that he got something and y'all break up, do you think he going to leave you with the shit that he got? No, bitch. You're going to be left with the fucking shit you got. And on top of that, like, build yourself up. You don't need no man to build you the fuck up. Like, it's nice to have a good man on your side, but you damn sure don't need one to build you the fuck up. Like, pff, girl, hundies. Be about your game. Be a boss. When I say be a boss, that don't mean you have to have all the money in the world. and You ain't got to have all the property and shit in the world. But it does mean, like, be about your shit. Be about your business. Be a strong-ass fucking woman. Like, I mean, I say I'm a boss only because I, am, I, I do shit on my own. I'm a strong individual, and I do this shit on my own because I have no choice, okay? However, at the end of the day, yeah, I miss my husband. Yeah, I can't wait till he come home. Yeah. But I know that if he doesn't or if we're not together, a bitch going to be all right. She going to do what she need to fucking do. You know what I'm saying? I always got a way around some shit. And I make it happen for me and my children. And I'm happy where I'm at. 
You know what I'm saying? Um, I just feel like some other women don't have the courage enough to be strong. And Gwen felt like that in the beginning. And you know what? She prevailed and she did this on her own. She got her three kids with her. She got her own place. She got goals and happiness and a job and a new man. So all in all, I'm happy for her. And I couldn't be any more. So take it from Gwen, women. You could do it. Take it from me. You could do it. You know what I'm saying? It's always nice to have a good, strong man on your side. But if you don't, bitches, you got this. So on that note, I got to get to the post office before they close because I do want to mail out these units. I love you guys. Leave your opinions below. Stay deep and deep delicious. Make sure you rate, comment, subscribe. Thumbs this video up. Tell me what you think of this hair. And um, if you want to see the video to it, then I will definitely release it because I'm feeling kind of cute on teeth. And also, what do y'all think about my third grandkid? Like, oh my God. So I love you and I'll see you guys soon. Uh, uh, oh yeah, stay uh, deep and uh, delicious. Okay. <laughs>